Chrome extensions scare me. And I think after this video, they might scare you too. Make sure you stick to the end because there's a lot of catches that you might not expect. If you're not already familiar, I kind of got my start in open source with a Chrome extension. Back when Windows 10 launched, I was working as an intern at Amazon. And I'll be honest, I wasn't super motivated. The manager I had went on a one month vacation the day I started and I had no idea what was going on. So I made a Chrome extension. Why did I make a Chrome extension? Well, when Windows 10 launched, they had a new feature called Cortana. Hi, I'm Cortana. Cortana put a search bar on the bottom left of your Windows setup that would search the internet or your computer, which sounds pretty cool until you learn that the internet search part actually just meant you could only search Bing with the Windows toolbar. It was a hilarious misplay on Microsoft's part. I was both amused and annoyed. So I decided to solve this problem the obvious way, which is redirect all Bing searches to the search engine of your choice. I made a quick Chrome extension called Chrome Tana. It went very viral. I was getting interview requests from Wall Street Journal. I was on the front page of Reddit for a while. We got over a million installs total over the first year. And I wish it never happened. Why? Well, I'll be frank, my Google account hasn't been the same since. We're going to talk about two major problems with Chrome extensions. And while these are targeting devs primarily, they absolutely affect you, the end user in Chrome and the safety of your browsing experience. I also recently made another Chrome extension. So more than ever, I'm dealing with these problems. And I hope when I show them to y'all, you'll understand why I'm so concerned. So here is the first one that came up. This was an HN post I saw earlier this week called Temptations of an Open Source Chrome Extension Developer. Over the years, I have received many proposals to monetize this extension, so I think I'll just start posting them here for fun, but not for profit. The main reason I continue to maintain this extension is because I can hardly trust others to not fall for one of these offers. I'm fortunate enough to have a job that pays well enough to allow me to keep my moral compass and ignore all of these propositions. I realize that not everyone has the same financial security, so hopefully this thread will shed some light onto what kind of pressure is put on extension developers. And then a pile of emails from random sketchy companies trying to buy his Chrome extension. What do I mean by buy the Chrome extension? In the Chrome da developer dashboard, you're able to transfer an extension and all of the installations and users who are using it effectively as well, which means that a developer, or in this case, a sketchy company can buy your extension and push malware to users. The amount of control and power you have as a Chrome extension is scary at times. And while yes, Google does audit and monitor which permissions things have when updates are pushed, people still sneak sketchy stuff through. And a lot of these attempts to purchase Chrome extensions are obviously coming from companies that want to do malicious things with them. They're not looking at the extension or what it does. They're exclusively interested in the amount of users that they could potentially infect and get the sketchy software onto the computers of. And you get dozens, if not hundreds of these, depending on how popular your Chrome extension is. With Chrome Tana, I was literally getting like six to 10 of these a day. I faced with your extension, Hover Zoom Plus. I know how much effort it took to make this extension. I would like to suggest to you the best way how to earn money for your product for your efforts. Some of these offer crazy numbers like 20K users is 2000 per month, 100K users is 10,000 and so on. So looking for more with dollar numbers. 0.07 to one cent per user. US is almost two cents per user. Do you see how many of these there are? This is insane. I. Yeah, and I can confirm I got a significant number of these too, with numbers as high as like $40,000 when I was still like in college and honestly needed the money. It was very, very hard to not take one of these offers as they kept coming in and they kept fucking coming in. It was nonstop. It, it felt like I was being irresponsible, not taking it because of how badly I needed the money. But I was scared of hurting my reputation as a dev and hurting the users of my thing. So I chose not to. Despite not taking any of these offers, I was still affected by the second problem that Chrome extensions encounter, specifically the devs. I got hacked. I had no idea how much Chrome extension devs with large user counts were targeted by phishing, scams, and all sorts of other things. And the worst part was I'm pretty on top of phishing scams. I went out of my way to make sure every email I got about anything related to Chrome was officially from Google. And in fact, I had a funny instance where my Chrome extension was actually removed from the Chrome web store because Google sent me an email that looked exactly like a phishing email and didn't sign their certificate that it came from. It was kind of hilarious, but Regardless, I had an instance where I signed into something with my Google OAuth token, immediately revoked it, and somehow through that, they were able to skip my Tufa and get into my Chrome extensions and publish malware to all of my users. It was a zero permission OAuth token that was somehow abused to get into my account and skip my OAuth entirely. This was way back in like 2019, but it was one of the scariest things that's ever happened to me. Being specifically focus targeted just so somebody can publish malware through your account. And I've never been so scared for like both 
the people that I was affecting, but also my own brand and the impact that would have on how people see me as a developer in the future. I'm still scared to check my old Reddit account because all of the replies are people flaming me for daring let someone hack my account with crazy hacks that when I talked to Google, they didn't think were real and had to look into it and go make a bunch of patches. But that's the point you're at when you have a Chrome extension with millions of users. There's so much potential profit when you have those users locked in that many, many bad actors are going to abuse every single possible exploit they can to get a hold of you. And even now, with a 100,000 subscriber YouTube channel that makes a good bit of money, I am not targeted anywhere near as much as I was at the peak of my Chrome extension. It's insane how risky it is both to be a Chrome extension developer, but also a user that has those things installed because Google does not do a good enough job keeping Chrome extension developers safe. And Google is certainly not doing enough to solve the problem of Chrome extension devs being offered massive payouts, ship a little bit of malware to their users. Google is taking this as a review problem, and while it does help, it'd be nice if they were to help the developer shipping these things more. It's scary to be a Chrome extension dev. One of the main reasons I don't do content about it or recommend it is all of these terrible things that happen as soon as you're successful with it. Do a quick look through of the Chrome extensions you have installed. Make sure you're confident every single one of them isn't gonna fall for one of those crazy buyouts or get hacked. And even then, you should probably consider uninstalling as many as you're able because those things, they're a risk. Be careful how you use your browser, careful about what you're installing. Hope this helps you better understand why Chrome extensions scare me. If you wanna learn more about Google accidentally destroying things, I'll pin a video in the corner all about how Gmail is going to destroy email if we're not careful. Thank you guys as always, really appreciate it. Peace nerds.